The following interview was conducted with Indra Bradley for the Purdue Oral History Project. It took place on August 4th, 2017 at the Indiana State Fair. The interviewer is Sammy Morris, University Archivist. Hi, Indra. Hi. Could you give um, a brief background on yourself, such as where you were from and what years you were at Purdue? I grew up in Fairmount, Indiana. I attended Purdue starting fall of 1995 and finished with a bachelor's degree in health promotion in August of 1999. I then um, Worked for two years in corporate wellness before returning to Purdue for my master's in health pedagogy from 2001 until 2003. Great. Okay. Um, do you recall the first time that you visited the campus at Purdue? I do. I, being from a small town, I actually didn't, well, I take that back. The first time I went to Purdue was for a high school mascot event during a women's basketball game. I went over with my grandmother because I was my um, high school mascot at Madison Grant. Go Argyles. You were the mascot? I was the mascot. Oh, okay. Um, so that was a quick visit. I didn't really think about attending Purdue that much. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to medical school at the time, and I always thought I'd end up at that school down south. <laughs> but then I uh, ended up applying to Purdue, and I didn't even apply to that other school. I applied to a smaller school also in southern Indiana. And, you know, I really thought I'd go there, but then Purdue kept sending me and sending me and sending me more things, encouraging me to come. And I could tell my father would prefer Purdue. Mm -hmm. um, so I just decided I'd go to Purdue. Okay. And I wasn't back on campus until I was there to register for classes. Wow. And I remember being a little overwhelmed by the size. Uh, but it, that quickly went away. And by the time I graduated, Purdue was a small campus. Oh, interesting. Okay. So when you were on campus, were you living there in the dorms? Or did you live off campus? I started out my freshman year in Windsor Hall in Vauder. Okay. And then I uh, went through sorority recruitments in January, back when it was still, you know, a foot of snow, since they were do still doing winter recruitment back then, oh, yeah. and joined Gamma Phi Beta sorority, and then called that home for the next three years up in Tower Acres. Oh, okay, good. Well, um, was there a particular place on campus or near campus where you liked to spend time or hang out while you were a student? I... I'll admit, I was very, very close to my sorority sisters, and that was home. Um, probably on campus, one of my favorite activities and places to be was the admissions office, as I was an office of admissions tour guide oh, for several were. years. Uh -huh. um, so I spent a lot of time, a lot of time there, and walking around campus backwards, and it was it was fabulous. So you got to know campus really I, well. I, like I said, I know campus forwards and backwards. <laughs> or at great. least I did know literally campus backwards. forwards and backwards, literally. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, did you have a favorite place to study? I know you mentioned that the sorority house was kind of your home. Was, was that where you usually that, studied? That's or? where I did most of, most of my studying. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, I was what we considered a Lambert rat by the time I got to my senior year, as that's where the majority of my core classes were held, was in Lambert. In Lambert. Okay, and so, so that was the term, Lambert rat. Lambert rat. Lambert rat, okay. <laughs> <laughs> did you, um, was, was the tour guide a, a paying position, or did you do that voluntarily? I started or? out with the Purdue Student Host Organization, and um, gave like over 30 tours non-paid. Wow. And then I interviewed and became a paid tour guide my senior oh, year. Great. Good. Well, um, this the rest of this is kind of just memories you want to share with us. Like when you think back on your time at Purdue, um, with us understanding, you know, you had kind of two stints there as an undergrad uh -huh. and a graduate student. What are, what are some of the memories that come to mind when you think about Purdue today? Just the friendships that I formed. Mm -hmm. um, the beauty of walking through campus during all seasons, you know, it may not have been great when the ice was polished, yeah. <laughs> but um, in the fall, you know, every so often I'll get a whiff when I'm outside of certain trees and it will remind me of campus. I mean, I met my husband, you know, he was in Triangle Fraternity, oh, and wow. so, you know, I, um, visiting uh, different fraternities, getting to make friends in different organizations. 
at the Purdue Health Advisory Board, Purdue Student Host Organization, Greeks Advocating Mature Management of Alcohol. I was involved in a lot of different activities in undergrad. And Purdue really became home. I made my best friends that I still consider family at Purdue. Wow. And it was tough to transition away from Purdue there for a while. I when I moved to Ohio for my first job, and then I decided to go back to grad school, and I had a grad assistantship in the union with the Purdue Student Union Board, and learned so much more oh, so about cool. Purdue and organizing events for Purdue, um, from the films in Valor, uh, and different activities around campus. It was, it was really great. So in grad school, I would say I spent the majority of my time in the union. It sounds like it. I mean, I even uh, my I guess I should I would put it properly. My boss at the time at the union, you know, she we became close friends. She was in my wedding. Oh wow! Um, I'm still in contact with a lot of the students I advise uh -huh. from the student union board. So it was really just a great time. That's terrific. And then you know we all have our favorite off campus spot of. Harry's. Harry's. Oh, of course. Yes. <laughs> Still true. Really you know, Harry's is an extension of campus. It is. So that's where some of, you know, the best memories are made. Harry's, Absolutely. Jake's. And then ultimately, you know, a couple years after grad school, I went, I taught health and middle school science in DeKalb, Illinois. And then me and my husband returned to Purdue for, and got married at St. Thomas Aquinas. Wow. Uh, and had uh, the Boiler Maker Extra Special made an appearance for our wedding photos Is that after, right? after the wedding. Um, and we took pictures all around campus using the Lafayette trolley that I had rented. Oh, fun. And I was actually very sad for a while because I really wanted to have my wedding reception in the union ballroom, uh -huh. but I did not want to wait three years to get married. Is that the waiting that, time? That was the wait time. It was that or get married on like, um, what was it? Was it homecoming weekend, I feel like? Oh, or that would be like that. Like, no, <laughs> no, no. So mm -hmm. uh, Purdue just holds a very special place in my heart. Um, once I was married, we were living in Lafayette for two years before moving to the Chicago area and eventually Pennsylvania, where we are currently and I taught in Lafayette schools, I taught middle school science, and I went back to campus regularly as a sorority advisor for Gamma oh. Phi Beta, and then took on an international volunteer role for a while with them. So basically, so much of my life connects back to my time at Purdue. It sounds like it, and you've remained so active. And I will forever be grateful. Um, I'm still happy to support what is now the PALS program that you started out as the National Youth Sports Program. I was there for yes. the very first event. Oh, and wow. I just see the good that it does for people. And it, that's just how Purdue is as a whole. What was it's that educating first event people. like? Do you remember? It was, it was fabulous. Mm -hmm. um, because at the time, Bill Harper in the Department of Health Sciences, well, um, now it's the Department of Health Sciences. It was wasn't at that point in time, but now they're part of that school. He was there for the first National Youth Sports Program mm -hmm. at the University of Southern California. And then to get that first program at Purdue, it was amazing. Just the amount of support we got from the community, from corporate donors like Speedo donating swimsuits for all of wow. the children, um, to seeing these kids who really needed it to go out, get that physical activity. I taught the health education portion of it. Oh, yeah. And it was it was amazing, and they got the new program of the year award that awesome. year, and it was just an amazing event. And there's just so much I have to be thankful for and grateful for. Oh well, thank you for Purdue. sharing these wonderful Love memories Purdue. with us. Um, I guess pretty much the only thing we have that we we're going to ask is, you know, how has how has the university changed since you were there? But you were there fairly recently, although it does change quickly. Um, it, it has changed. Yeah. You know, when you see buildings torn down, when I first started on campus, GEM still sat at the corner of University and 3rd Street. Oh. And now there's a computer science building. Mm -hmm. um, I have not been to see, you know, all the construction, destruction going on along State Street right now you know but new buildings new buildings go up old spots come down mm -hmm. and you know 
And it's good to see the campus grow and thrive. And of course, it's always a little emotional to see, oh, you know, I used to go there. And, sure. And to see those spots leave. Yeah. But well, campus you're... always has to think towards the future. Oh, absolutely. And I think you have, you're in a unique spot having done the tours. You know a lot about the Purdue history and the buildings and so mm -hmm. forth. And I'm sure their scripts change regularly as well. The only other thing I was kind of intrigued to ask you about is do you remember um, when and how you met your husband? I know you said that he was in a fraternity. <laughs> and this doesn't have to be for the record if you don't want it to be. Uh, um. <laughs> well, um, one of my good friends that I had known from elementary school through high school growing up in a small town, you know, our names were alphabetically close enough that we were around each other constantly. And when we got to Purdue, it's like, oh, I'm never going to know. I'm not going to run into anyone from high school here. Mm -hmm. Oh, first weekend I run into him. Wow. And of course he was, he was looking for a girlfriend and, you know, I introduced him to a few people. And then one of my sorority sisters had broken up with her boyfriend and I'm like, Oh, go out with him. You know, you'll go on a few dates. Yeah. And ultimately, I started hanging out at Triangle Fraternity with her for several years. My husband's two years younger than me. Wow. That's how long I was hanging out there. Uh, before <laughs> I finally, I met him um, at Triangle Fraternity, you know. Uh, so I didn't think anything of it. And then it was probably another year before I actually started talking to him thinking about it and now. my friend and my sorority sister you know got married ultimately and then we got married and so I'm as close to some of his fraternity brothers as I am some of my sorority sisters and That's it's the great. connections you make at Purdue that makes Purdue a truly small school mm -hmm. with a lot of people in it I agree thanks so much Andrea, uh -huh. for sharing your memories with us